The Jacobite Rising of 1719 was the third attempt to restore the House of Stuart to the throne of Britain. It coincided with the War of the Quadruple Alliance, which saw the unusual combination of France, Britain, Austria, the Dutch Republic and Savoy all arrayed against Spain. The Spanish provided limited support to the exiled Stuarts, which resulted in the landing of a few hundred troops on the northwest coast of Scotland. In June 1719, two significant encounters took place. The first was a reduction of Aileen Donan Castle by Royal Navy frigates. The second was one of the most unusual horse and musket period battles ever fought. A force of around 1,000 Jacobites adopted an uncharacteristic prepared defensive position across the dramatic landscape of Glenshiel, with most of the works several hundred feet above the valley floor on precipitous slopes. As the Hanoverian force of infantry, dragoons and highland companies advanced westward down the glen towards Loch Duich, its progress was blocked by the Jacobites. What followed was a rolling attack up the steep slopes supported by portable cohorn mortars. After over five hours of fighting, the Jacobites withdrew and effectively the rising was over. The attacking Hanoverian force was of similar size to Keith's mixed force of clansmen and Spanish infantry. The battle is memorable mainly for its location, Jacobite role reversal as defenders and the unusual combination of Scots, English, Dutch and Spanish troops who participated. I decided to spend a little time walking on the battlefield and marvelling at the dramatic ground. This is Glen Shield. Looking down the glen towards Loch Dewey. And we're going to go up on the hillside to the battlefield. Somewhere up there. This is at the very foot of the slope beside the road. Let's have a look at these boards. So I am heading up a fairly whoops, steep pathway, not so easy to navigate. This slope here is enormously steep. You can see the gradient. I'm scrambling to get up. Just going to take a look back down the road down there. I mean I'm probably 30-35 meters off the track and this ground would be impossible for cavalry. I mean it's a struggle for infantry. I'm walking freely here. Nobody's shooting at me with musket balls but this must have been a terrifying prospect for the government troops. Looking at entrenched positions up on that slope. I'm just gonna go up there. Okay, so where am I now? Caught my breath a little bit. I'm about 80 to 100 metres off the road. Looking south. You can see there's some cars passing on the 87 there. Now, apparently, these positions on the opposite side, the south side of the road, and I'm just going to swing round. Up here was where probably somewhere in the region of a thousand Jacobites were entrenched. This is a hell of a place for a battle. I'm up now maybe 150 meters above the road level. You can see there's a pretty active stream there. There's one in front of me. There's one to my left. The slope above me is very steep. I'm going to try and make it up there but as a defensive position this is incredibly strong. Somewhat reminds me of the old uh, western movies where the Apaches are up in the hills 
and the cavalry of the settlers are down there on the road being picked off one by one. I'm literally standing in the middle of a brook or a burn as we would call it here in Scotland. The water is flowing pretty much all around my feet. I'm looking back east. But bloody hell. This is a battlefield. This area that we're looking at down here probably had upwards of a thousand troops. I wouldn't say deployed. They were probably in lines or columns trailing back, maybe trying to deploy on some of the flat ground there over the riverside. But this would have been very, very difficult to organize both from an offensive and a defensive point of view, because this is the terrain that we're looking at right now, which would have contained the Hanoverian soldiers. And when I say Hanoverian, there were some Dutch troops, but mostly they were British, because we're using that term now, Scots and English, some Highlanders in local companies recruited by the government, also some regular troops, some grenadiers, dragoons and some infantry. And then sending men up this slope here, it's no uh, exaggeration to call it a mountain, calling it a hill would be doing it a disservice. It's a bloody mountain. And how would they have got up? They would have had to scrambled up like me. One of the things that I hadn't counted on being here was that I was myself going to be attacked, not by Jacobites or Hanoverians, but by what we call in Scotland clegs, which are sort of large, very evil horseflies, which really suck the life out of you and leave you with fairly horrendous wounds. My attack up the slopes here at Glenshiel may be called off by a charge from the horseflies, the clegs. A tough gig. I've come down a little bit from the road in the distance towards the Five Sisters of Kintail and then out towards Aileen Donan and eventually out that way towards the island of Skye back up the pass here. We're going to go down to the river level and we'll have a look at the slope which may well have contained Spanish or Jacobite troops at the top. It's been reasonably dry the last few days so the river's quite low. For anyone considering wargaming Glenshiel, quite a lot of challenges based on available rules. It's probably best fought as a skirmish, large skirmish action, I would say, not as a, a battle. Despite the fact that the number of troops would have been quite significant, over a thousand Jacobites and Spanish, possibly that number of Hanoverian troops. Astonishing. Having had a little bit of time to reflect on some of the information available about the battle, standing here on the ground looking up apparently where we're looking right now having checked it out looking at a few photographs and maps and also some descriptions that was the area that i attempted to get up to a little bit earlier on and up there is the area of entrenchment the northern side where the longer what looks like a dry stone dike was built Seems a wee bit implausible that a defending force would have had that amount of time and ability to forage for considerable amounts of stone and rock to build such well-formed defences that have survived for over 300 years. Small cohorn mortars, they can really only have been used as a terror weapon. Some accounts say the Highlanders were unfamiliar with mortars, certainly their officers will have served in European wars. They would know fine well what a mortar was and how it worked. Effectively a large grenade. I'm not sure that the mortars really well placed mortar fire is something that's mentioned in a few accounts. Seems a bit fanciful. It's not a very accurate weapon, not a sighted weapon. It's throwing very small projectiles at men concealed. Okay, they are portable. 
you could get them up the hillside and the battle did last for about five hours so it is possible that mortars were brought forward and used at closer range but certainly not a bombardment from mortars particularly because there were only five or six and that's really not a lot and it's not the normal kind of support of artillery that would be used I mean this was a clearance operation really but this has prompted me to revisit some of the contemporary writings and also modern writings about Glenshiel and see if I can decode a little bit of that. Signing off from Glenshiel.